I figured I'd show some clips and pictures uh, from when I used to surf before I got sick in January 2020. I have this map in my room that is like a world map of every kind of known little, you know, a lot of surf spots around the world. Um, and I put a little red dot on the map every single time that I surf that location. And the goal in the long run is to surf every single continent. Now I guess I have to do that with one leg and one lung, but I got it. I will show you as soon as I lay down because uh, holding my posture up even like this takes a lot of energy for me. So, <laughs> give me a few moments and I will show you the map. Look. So here is the surf map of the world. I guess we can start over here in Australia. I went to Australia with my dad in 2016. We were visiting his family friends um, that he met when he was living as an exchange student there in high school. And I ended up surfing pretty much one of the first times that I really surfed. I guess we can fly over here to Indonesia. Um, I lived kind of to the left of Changu in a place called Paranan. And I surfed there every day uh, for two months. It was the most amazing trip. This was in 2019, about five or six months before I got sick. So this was really the, the last surf trip I did on two legs. But I'm glad I got to spend so much time there. Some of my favorite moments were surfing at the very bottom dot there called Uluwatu. Um, and it was a big day. Um, I learned a lesson about big wave surfing on that day that when the waves get so big, you can't usually do like a quick turn off the top. At least I think so. Um, you can't do a turn off the top of the wave right when you get up. You have to kind of go down the line first before making a turn or it'll inevitably just kind of hold you up in the lip and throw you off. So I had better days uh, next to that spot at a place called Impossibles. Just really long lefts. Um, you had to wear booties out there for the most part because it gets so shallow, but Oh, beautiful, beautiful waves. My most favorite spot though uh, was way to the left uh, inland of Bali, going quite west, it's called Madui, and there weren't very many people there. The first time I went out there was like 10 to 13 feet, and uh, we couldn't catch anything, but later on in the trip, uh, we went out with some friends, we visited Madui again, and it was much smaller, probably you know three or four feet, but the waves were really clean, and you could just catch as many as you wanted. There was really nobody out there, and that's where this line came from uh, when I found a fun little right early in the morning, and it was so beautiful. It's also a lot of uh, this guy was washing cows in the river, which was kind of funny. Over here we have Central America. I spent a lot of time in the northern part of uh, Costa Rica and southern Costa Rica. Uh, places like Santa Teresa and which is Rock, Ollie Point. Oh, they were beautiful, beautiful waves out there and the people are just so kind. It's, it can be very dry in the summer when we went but it's so tropical and the rainforest is just beautiful. Highly recommend visiting there even if you don't surf. I've surfed in Jacksonville, Florida. That was different because I'm so used to channels here in Hawaii that paddling out into these waves, it's just a relentless wall that you just got to battle through. Massachusetts and New York. Uh, I really first started surfing in Nantucket. Uh, I would go out every summer and I didn't really like it that much, but you know, I thought it was kind of cool. I really did not start surfing until I moved to Hawaii my freshman year of college about five years ago. And then over here we have a walk loop. I love surfing. Backyards. And Rocky Point, off the wall. And on the south shore, Sandies and Irma Beach. Ala Moana Bowls. They've just been really where I've learned to surf, honed my surfing, and I just can't wait to get back out in the water and onto those waves again. <laughs>